in this video we are going to look into a very novel as well as important topic that is uh, Rybczynski's theorem. So I am really sorry if I have pronounced it wrong. Okay, uh, let's get started. Okay. This theory actually shows the relationship between endowments and output. A serious again consider this theory as one which belongs to the arena of international economics. If you are very much familiar with the Heschler of Lean model, you, you can uh, understand this theory very well because uh, this theory has got um, some connections with Heschler of Lean model. This theorem demonstrates how the changes in an endowment affect the output of goods when there is pool employment. And it is assumed that pool employment is main, maintained throughout. <coughs> okay. Uh, this theorem, theorem could be used in analyzing the effects of capital investment, immigration and emigration within the context of HR model, that is Hesher opening model. Uh, before uh, telling more, I would like to uh, uh, make you understand the difference between immigration and emigration. Uh, so immigration is actually uh, the movement of people from uh, to the um, movement of people to the home country and emigration is a movement of people from home country to the destination country okay so uh, this is what uh, the difference is and uh, this theorem could be better explained by using the diagram given here uh, in this figure uh, uh, this theory's graphical representation is depicted if you look at the red line uh, it is the labor constraint uh, and the steeper the lower line, uh, I mean, uh, with respect to the red lines, you could see that the com by comparing the two lines, the lower line is much more steeper than the uh, line which is above the uh, line, um, I mean, line which is above that line. And uh, uh, coming to the blue line, it's, it's a line which is relatively flatter, right? And now you have to uh, think that in this production possibility frontier, uh, initially the production happens at point A. Okay. And uh, just suppose that after this particular point, there is, a, there is an increase in the labor endowment. If there is an increase in labor endowment, what happens is that as a result of the same, uh, there is an outward parallel shift of the labor constraint. Okay, so as a result of the same, the production possibility frontier would shift from point A to point B. And the production of clothing, which is represented in the x axis, uh, so here uh, this clothing is considered to be a labor intensive good, and this will rise from C1 to C2. Okay, and the production of steel, which is represented on the y axis, this will uh, this is actually a capital intensive good. This will fall from S1 to S2. So this is the major implication of uh, th this particular model. You can understand that if the endowment of capital rose, the capital constraint would shift out. At, uh, so as a result, this would cause uh, an increase in the steel production and a decrease in the clothing production. Since we have taken steel and clothing on y and x axis representative uh, respectively we are taking this uh, as the example here uh, for explanation as well so you can take uh, two different goods as well but you, uh, you have to remember one thing that one should be labor intensive and uh, the other one should be capital let's say with respect to its production so in general an increase in the country's endowment of a factor will lead to an increase in the output of a good which uses the factor intensively and decrease in the output of that uh, other good. I mean, uh, the one which uses fact, the factor less intensively. So to be very clear, this is the very essence of the theorem. If you look into Rabinsky's theorem, you will uh, uh, understand that there is a there exists a positive relationship between the changes in the factor endowment and changes in the output of that particular commodity which uses the factor intensively whereas in the case of um, uh, a negative relationship where 
uh, the negative relationship between uh, changes in uh, factor endowment and changes in output uh, of that particular commodity which does not use the factor intent failure. So this is the basic essence of the theory. I hope you got some idea with respect to this model. With that, uh, we end today's session. Please like, share and subscribe to this channel. Uh, also, you can be a part of my Telegram group and Telegram channel to discuss your doubts. This is actually a requested video. Like this, you can make uh, your request appear in my comment box so that I can pick it up and make a short session on the uh, video. I mean, a session on the topic that uh, you will be commenting. With that, we end today. Thank you.